It's very rare that like a certain movie sequel ever lives up to the original. For most people, you know, most sequels are considered inferior. But, you know, that's not always the case. See, lots of uh, lots of movie sequels have very much surpassed the original and to the point where, you know, most people consider it to be much better than the said original. Like for example, there's, you know, Terminator 2, there's Aliens, there's um there's the Dark Knight, and even, you know, the Dark Knight Rises, which I even consider even better than, you know, the Dark Knight. I mean, I wouldn't go that far, but, you know, once you watch it, it's like, uh, you know, you know, the perfect conclusion to, you know, that the previous film. Like, the Dark Knight was better than Batman Begins, but then the Dark Knight Rises was much better than, you know... <sighs> The original Dark Knight. <laughs> That's one way to put it. But then, you know, there are, for the most part, sequels are considered hit and miss. Like, you know, there's certain good cult movies like, you know, Species, Hollow Man, and House. They've received, you know, they've gotten sequels. You know, you know House and uh, Species especially had terrible sequels. You know, Species 2 was a total dud, and uh, House 2's second so story was just, you know, not that great. Some underrated, you know, sequels that I consider to be, you know, largely overlooked are like, you know, The French Connection 2, and like, um, probably, you know, probably Sudden Impact, although that's not really a, that's not the sequel, that's like the, I think the the third sequel to the Dirty Harry franchise, and like uh, the type the most the most types of sequels that are considered to be like uh, rather inferior to the original are ones that are like uh, that were made like ten or twenty years after the original was made. Like for instance, there was Carrie, and like. Um, Several decades later, The Rage Carry 2 came out, and that wasn't as good as the original. In fact, that was supposed to be its, like, you know, own film and not follow by the Carry mythos whatsoever. So, yeah, that one just wasn't that great. It kind of executed poorly. That's one way to say it. And then there's, you know, Chinatown. And like uh, the the two Jakes, you know, I I've only seen bits and pieces of uh, the two Jakes, but I can tell you that you know it was okay, but it paled in comparison to you know Chinatown, which was a tragic classic in my opinion. And uh, and like uh, even Psycho, it had a you know a sequel like two decades later, you know, and, and actually two sequels, you know, and like. Uh, the first sequel had, uh, you know, Andy Sipowitz from NYPD Blue in it, which is crazy. But anyway, um, one particular sequel that I actually did not find too horrible, although I did pretty much not love it, was An American Werewolf in Paris, which was a sequel to American Werewolf in London. That very much paled in comparison to the 1981 original because i mean i personally i i mean i love the original i love the dark atmosphere i love you know the the dark humor in it you know american werewolf in paris just didn't really you know capture the same kind of tone or energy and because that was like got made i don't know 27 years later it was released in 1997 and it just played like a typical like scream clone. As a matter of fact, on like the the back of the DVD or VHS says, you know, it's a mix between Scream and From Dust Till Dawn, or in the tradition of Scream and From Dust Till Dawn. Like I that without even mentioning uh, it being a sequel, John Landis, you know, the original director director of an American Werewolf in London, 
hated, you know, the Paris one. I mean, I can understand because it's an insult to his vision, but I mean, I didn't find it terrible, but there were a lot of flaws. Like, it was too lighthearted, and it just really, it wasn't as, like, well-focused as the original. And it didn't capture, like, the tragic love that uh, the original had, you know. Although, you know, I did like so the, I did like the cast. Julie Delpy, you know, from the Before trilogy and Killing Zoe, she was... She made it, delivered a pretty good performance, and Tom Everett Scott, you know, he's all he he usually plays like very likable characters, you know, in movies like That Thing You Do, Dead Man on Campus, even in movies where he's not so likable, like the movie Boiler Room, where he's like uh, one of the greedy invest, like a uh, you know corporate stockbrokers. I mean, pretty much any role he plays, he's just like this likable average dude. And American Werewolf in Paris, you know, I have to give kudos to the soundtrack. I mean, it features like a ton of good, you know, 90s bands that I really dig. Better Than Ezra, Cake, Red Cross. I mean, a ton of uh, like other great shit on that, on that album. You know, I could, you know... Not so much I can think of at the top of my list, but there's one band that uh, on that side, oh, The Refreshments, the, the Suicide Machines, those are other bands on the album, but, and there's like a few other bands that I'm trying to get get into on that CD that, uh, that I still haven't gotten into, but one band that I feel is underappreciated that appears on that soundtrack, but is not as well known as the ones that I mentioned, is this band. This is a band called Fat. They're like a uh, a combination of alternative and funk metal. You know, kind of like uh, similar to like early Red Hot Chili Peppers and Rage Against the Machine. And like, um, this is actually their one album in existence. They have not made any other stuff after this one. This is their self-titled album released in uh, 1997 through DV8 Records, which is a division of AMC, A&M Records. So I found this album at um, Algonquin Records last summer for a dollar. I could not pass it up. I looked them up first, and the first thing I noticed is that their song songs appeared in numerous you know, soundtracks. Well... Like, you know, Downtime, which is track number two, is the one that, you know, appears on the An American Werewolf in Paris soundtrack. But um, the first track off this album, Dog, there that song uh, appears on, like, a, a compilation album. You know, X Games, Volume 2, which featured, you know, an eclectic mix of, like, rock, hip-hop, electronica, you know, bands like Helmet and Red Hot Chili Peppers, and of course this band, Public Enemy was on it. I actually used to own two of those albums, but uh, but uh, ironically, that was like the only album that I did not, the, the Volume 2 was like the only one that I did not have. Like I had Volume 1, which featured, you know, Faith No More, Ministry, uh, you know, Gravity Kills was on it ton of good shit and like the third one featured you know cold chamber mighty mighty bostones a lot of stuff that i'll, I'll list but I'll, I'll just you know continue to ramble i truly dig this album this is like um you know, and it's really a shame too you because like uh this uh i love like the gritty edge they have you know that this whole album has like all the other songs on it are just awesome but downtime is like the only one on this album that has a music video to it you can you know check it out on youtube you know just type in in the search icon whatever and like uh just uh take us take a look at uh what you uh what you think of the uh the video and just uh if you're into like you know a ton, of, see, I am a huge fan of like funk rock. You know, Living Color, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Faith No More. 
you know, Rage Against the Machine, of course, even though Rage has, you know, currently gotten a lot of backlash lately for their liberal views, I guess. But I would, you know, personally pick this one up. I mean, I'm sure you can find this, like, uh, you know, you know, used in, like, a clearance section. But you first, maybe, if you prefer to just, you know, stream it or, you know, just buy shit off. You just just uh, look this up on Amazon. First, actually, look this up on Discogs and just look at the, you know, the whole biography. I mean, they've, uh, I've, like, uh, considered this to be an underrated band, you know, because just, like I said, the raw energy they have and, like, uh, the, it's just sad that they did, could not, like, live up to you know, the success of the other funk metal bands that uh, I just mentioned. Because, like, um, they would have, you know, really wailed, you know, if, like, they continue on making a... They've released... I guess they've released some other LPs, but uh, that's basically it. This is, like, like I said, their only album in existence. You know, full length, uh, of course, so... If you see this anywhere, if you can find it at like a uh, local record shop or, you know, a secondhand shop, I would give this a go. I mean, if you're into, you know, a lot of that funk rock stuff that I mentioned, pick this one up and just, you know, give it a listen. So, Fat, their debut album, their only de their only album in existence like i said self-titled released through dv8 records in 1997 and that's it thanks for watching